Welcome everyone to Half History Will Travel. I am your host, the Wilder Historian, and if you love anything and everything Civil War related, then you probably have watched the 1980s miniseries North and South. It chronicles the life of the main protagonist, Ori Main, played by Patrick Swayze, from his journey to West Point Military Academy through the Civil War. He meets George Hazard, played by James Reed, at West Point, and their friendship survives through the greatest political divide in American history. It is a great story and is based off some best-selling novels. Although they are fictional characters, the situations were real, and over the years I have watched it multiple times, especially when I did not have cable or satellite working on my coursework in grad school. I would pop in the DVD and let it play in the background, if nothing else, while I was working on papers. There are many moments that create a great representation of what actually happened during the lead-up to and during the Civil War. One of those great moments is during the Secession Convention in South Carolina, where the Maines live. Ori, his sisters Brett and Ashton, and his best friend George are in Charleston when the vote is taken, and secession is passed in South Carolina. Each character represents a group of people thrown together in the heated political turmoil in America during the secession winter of 1860 to 1861. In this scene, we hear Ori, Brett, and George hear the ruckus of the citizens of Charleston celebrating secession in the street outside the house. And this is where we see a great depiction of the celebrations in South Carolina when secession is passed in the state. Once Ori, Brett, and George come out onto the porch, Ori's sister Ashton approaches them. She embodies the Southern Fire Eaters who were all in on the subject of secession. They had no hesitation in leaving the Union and were the main group of people who pushed the South in voting for secession. Although Ashton's joy turns to vindictiveness when she learns that her sister will be marrying a Pennsylvanian. Ori in this scene partly represents the conditional unionists, which will become more apparent later on in the series when he sides with South Carolina when the war breaks out because of a loyalty to state. However, in these scenes during the secession winter, he represents well the southerners who were not on board with secession and feared what a separation would cause. Plus, he was a Mexican-American war veteran, along with George, who, being a Pennsylvanian, recalled at the thought of losing the cohesion of the United States. I love the celebration scene because it fits nicely with the newspaper reports of what was happening in South Carolina at this time when the vote was passed. In the Yorkville Enquirer on December 20th, 1860, when the day that South Carolina seceded, they reported that it is all smiles, joy, and good fellowship. Their meetings are generally at night, and the day every man is quietly at his business, and everything is going smoothly on. 
Flags in hand, flags across the streets, flags at printing offices, stores, shops, booths, and omnibuses in every direction. Another newspaper, the Abbeville Press, reported on December 21, 1860. Secession. The news of the passage by the Convention of Columbia of the resolution recommending immediate secession was received by our citizens generally with enthusiastic demonstrations of joy. Guns were fired and all were prepared to hail with rapture the era of our second independence. The Charleston Mercury suggests that the day following the passage of the Ordinance of Secession be observed in that city as a general holiday. The City Council of Augusta have resolved to ring this large city bell on the reception of the news. Next, the Maines and George get approached by James Hontoon, Ashton's husband, who is one of the main politicians in the movie promoting secession. Thus, he represents another fire eater. Of course, this is not portrayed in this scene, but Brett and Billy's marriage allows the movie to display Brett as one of the main Southerners who struggled to remain neutral during the war. Her husband is in the U.S. Army, but her family lives in South Carolina. Thus, she simply seeks to survive when the war comes to her doorstep and does not choose a side. Thank you for watching. I hope this put this miniseries in historical context. Even though it is fictional and some of the dialogue is outlandish, some scenes do a great job representing the time period, and when you're able to break it down like I just did, the series does have some historical accuracy. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next week.